From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. For tuning to our channel this evening, Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, hypokalemia. You see, hypokalemia basically low potassium level. We can say less than 3.5. Just remember that. Less than 3.5 milliequivalents per liter. So less than 3.5 is hypokalemia. Now there are many, many conditions that can cause hypokalemia. Let us go with the most common things and then less common things. The most common things, just use common sense. You can take less and you can lo lose more. That's the most common thing for anything, even for calcium or sodium for anything the common causes are taking less and losing more that means if you vomit you're losing diarrhea or urine you're you're losing if you take it less you are not getting enough so these are the things we need to remember and also insulin insulin it sends the potassium into the cell resulting into resulting in uh, hypokalemia. In trauma patients, trauma patients, folks, they get self-limited hypokalemia. Sometimes barium intoxication, it causes it. And aldosterone increase when aldosterone, like uh, conditions like primary hyperaldosteronism or secondary aldosteronism or in heart failure or dehydration, renal vascular hypertension, malignant hypertension, ectopic ACTH producing tumor. What happens is aldosterone reduces potassium level while increasing the blood pressure. There are some syndromes, Bartle syndrome and uh, Gittleman syndrome, Liddell's syndrome, and uh, even some uh, ACTH producing tumors, renin producing tumors, congenital abnormality of uh, steroid metabolism like uh, adenogenital syndrome or 17 hydroxylase defects or 11 hydroxylase deficiency. These are the conditions that increases the renal blood loss, uh, sorry, renal potassium loss. So the potassium is lost in the urine in these conditions. And also diuretics, you give hydrochlorothiazide or furosemide the patients start to lose potassium in their urine. Okay, so loop diuretics are one of the most common causes of potassium loss. And also magnesium depletion should be considered in refractory hypokalemia. Why? Because magnesium is important for the absorption of potassium. So when there is not enough uh, magnesium, patients will develop potassium loss or potassium uh, hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis there's some other cause congenital defect of uh, distal nephron or Liddell syndrome and uh, extra renal potassium loss like vomiting that's one thing vomit people vomit out potassium laxatives when they use laxatives what are they doing they are vomiting out their potassium Zolins and Ellison syndrome, what happens? There is so much acid production, patients start to vomit out their potassium because of that. So hypokalemia, and it's a dangerous condition. For example, patients who are taking digitalis, they can develop digitalis toxicity in the presence of hypokalemia. And also erythemias. Whenever a patient has heart failure and if the patient has hypokalemia, 
they might develop dangerous erythemias that can take away their lives. So hypokalemia, and it has so many things, like we have genetic disorders like Bartos syndrome, Gittleman syndrome, Liddell syndrome. So these syndromes, folks, they cause by the mutations, genetic mutations, and they cause, uh, they are the congenital causes of hypokalemia. And what are the symptoms and signs? Many patients develop uh, cramps, and uh, some patients develop uh, muscle paralysis, you know, hypokalemic periodic paralysis. And because uh, the movement st stops, like it decreases in the GI tract, they develop constipation and ileus, tetany, rhabdomyolysis, and uh, they could get flashed paralysis, hyporeflexia. So the presence of hypertension, so those are the things, okay? So if the patient has hyperaldosteronism, they develop hypertension and hypokalemia. So if a patient has hypertension and hypokalemia, think of hyperaldosteronism. That's what aldosterone does. Now laboratory findings. The important thing is check urine potassium. If it is low, that means Think about vomiting or diarrhea. Those are the extra renal causes of hypokalemia. If the urine potassium is high, that means they are losing in their urine through the kidney. So the, the problem is the renal loss of potassium. Okay? So just checking that will help you to uh, differentiate between renal and extra renal causes of hypokalemia. So just always check that urine potassium level. Then there is another thing, transtubular gradient, okay, transtubular K plus gradient, TT, KJ. This is a very, very important concept. Now, how do you measure transtubular potassium gradient? Simple, urine K plus divided by potassium plasma K plus divided divided by urine osmolality by plasma osmolality okay so urine k plus divided by plasma k plus divided by urine osmolality divided by plasma osmolality that's the formula so if a ttkg is more than 4 that means renal potassium loss okay so ttkg more than 4 the patient is losing K plus through the kidneys. How helpful it is to differentiate between renal loss and extra renal loss. So remember folks, TTKG is very helpful. Now the other diagnostic test is electrocardiogram. When you do an electrocardiogram, you can see an EKG behind me. You will see the broadening T waves and prominent U waves. Okay. You also see premature pre premature ventricular contractions and depressed ST segments. So you see the T waves followed by the U waves. Now, how do you treat? Simple. Low potassium. So give potassium. If it is uh, something less mild hypokalemia, give by mouth oral potassium. Potassium phosphate is not helpful, so you should give potassium chloride. Potassium chloride, you should give potassium chloride. And if it is severe, give IV potassium. Okay, so simple to remember. Mild, give by mouth. Severe, give by IV lines. And you can run, we call it K plus riders, 20 milli equivalents. You can give one or two or three and based on the deficiency the patient is having. So those are the most important points when we talk. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God rich 
richly bless you. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.